account, uh, that is the learning account called Let's Learn From Home. Uh, for all those that have been attending these lessons, I want to encourage you to continue working hard. The senior five students, the senior six students that stay at home, the O-level students that are following the O-level program, continue working hard, work relentlessly, don't give up. You'll be able to succeed um, in life and in your academic work. To those of you that are still taking things for granted, I want to remind you that COVID-19 is still there and encourage you to make sure that you follow the SOPs as by the guidelines of the Ministry of Health uh, so that we combat this disease together as a, a joint effort. Last time, we were looking at lenses. We were able to define the terms on lenses. We were able to look at the different types of lenses. And I left an assignment. I left an assignment on uh, formation of images uh, in lenses. I will be starting by reviewing that assignment and we shall proceed to look at uh, how we can derive the lens formula and be able to proceed in that line um, as our lesson flows. So allow me to go straight to the lesson. Please enjoy the lesson. I will begin with uh, one type of um, image formation that we looked at last time when we are using the lens that we call a concave lens. Uh, concave lens is obtained by using two lenses that are concave indeed. I will simply first illustrate how we obtain this lens. We combine two concave lenses, that one and this one. They are combined in such a way that we close them up and down, and once we close them, we form a concave lens. Uh, similarly, I will show you when we move to the convex lens, how they are formed. Now, when we have an object, uh, before I go to the object formation, there is a reason why we actually have two foci and two centers of curvature. Because this is a mirror. Initially, this is a mirror. It must have a focal length, and it must have a center of curvature which we write as twice the focal length. And because we have another mirror here, the other side, it also must have a principal focus and a center of curvature, which again we write as 2F. This is the reason why lenses have um, that kind of arrangement, that they have two focal points or principal foci and uh, two centers of curvature. Now, I will illustrate two diagrams. Diagram one, if I choose to put the object here, if I choose to put the object here, I'm going to use a free hand, but I want to remind the students following this program that our red diagrams must be drawn with a ruler and ink. A ruler and ink. Uh, one could use a pencil, it does not matter, but I want to emphasize that you must have a ruler. So I will use a free hand. Ideally, 
rays that are parallel to the principal axis, which is this line. This line is the principal axis from our definitions. It is the line that passes through the optical center and uh, right through the centers of curvature. So if a ray is parallel, it is diverged. It is diverged. And to an observer over there, it appears to be coming from the principal focus. I want to emphasize that uh, to an observer, this should appear to be a straight line. Uh, if you extrapolate, it should be a straight line. At this point, there must be a bending, which we call the refraction of light, for the real rays. The dotted is an imaginary ray. And then our optical center here, which I'll call point C, will have another ray that is expected to come and pass through that point that I'm calling the optical center. Uh, this ray passes without any deviation or refraction. But where it meets with this one, however brief the two, uh, the space is, should be an image which must be dotted also. This image must be dotted. In other words, it is not a continuous image. First of all, this focal point is virtual. It is virtual. And the image which is now formed here is um, a virtual image. Now, the nature of this image is summarized. The nature of I is summarized. <coughs> One, it is a virtual image. I will be reminding learners following this lesson what virtual images are, much as I talked about it when we are looking at curved mirrors. The image is also erect or upright. Either of these two words could be used to describe the image. The image is diminished. If you look at the size of the object, in the size of the image, you notice it is smaller in size. We use the word diminished. And uh, last but not least, the image is formed between, between the optical center and uh, focal point or principal focus. Now there is a distinction that I must make here. Case two. Case two of the convex lens um, is one could choose to use a smaller lens near the center. Um, <clears throat> in the first case, I put my image uh, between F and 2F. Now I want to put it uh, here. I want to bring it nearer. And then I can make my justification. If the object is pressed here, we said we must have a ray parallel to the principal axis, which will definitely be reflected off to pass through the focal point. But at this point, it is refracted. It is refracted at this point, but it appears to be coming from the principal focus. And we said we must have another ray that should pass through the optical center. If you have a ruler, the ray passing through the optical center does not meet any refraction at all. The image will be formed here, and it is virtual. 
It is virtual as I already earlier identified and put the characteristics. Now, this diagram, the second diagram, confirms the fact which I will be putting here that it is important that candidates note that irrespective, irrespective of the position, of the position of the object, in other words, no matter the position of the object, the image formed which we are calling I, is always, always between the optical center, between the optical center and the principal focus, and the principal focus. It is very important for candidates and any other physics interested student or person to note. In case one, the object was between F and 2F. The image was between F and the optical center. In case two, <coughs> the object was brought nearer between F and the optical center this time around, but still the image was between F and the optical center. And therefore, this confirms that the position of the object does not affect whatsoever uh, where the image will be by shifting it. The image will always be between the optical center and the principal focus for the concave lens. Remember, the concave lens is also called the diverging lens. It is also called the diverging lens because it diverges light to appear to appear to be coming from a principal focus <clears throat> we are going to look at selected cases for the second type of lens which is the the convex the convex lens the convex lens the convex lens different from uh, the concave lens uh, is also called the converging lens. The converging lens. It's also called the converging lens. <clears throat> and from the name, it actually suggests that it brings light rays to one common point. And that common point uh, is still the point we are calling the principal focus. Look at this. Just like I shared with you, if we have two convex mirrors, this mirror is called convex. And we have another convex mirror. I'll make this slightly uh, less curving. These are two mirrors. If we join them up to touch each other, we form the type of lens that we are call, calling the converging lens. And the reasoning is still the same, that this mirror, this one, has its focal point this side and has its center of curvature, which we write as twice the focal point, the other side. Similarly, this mirror here also has its focal point here and it is center of curvature the, at 2F away. Um, students, again, in my lesson, should note that the distance from the optical center, which is the center point of the lens that I can call C, to the principal focus 
is the same as the distance from the principal focus to the uh, center of curvature to F. Now, convex lenses refract light that is parallel, and that light is converged to the focal point. Let us look at cases of images, and we start with the very first one. If we put the object, I can use this as case one, and I say that object, object is between F and P, object between F and P. If I have an object here, between F and P, between F and, uh, and 2F, um, a, a ray that is parallel, parallel to the principal axis, will be refracted to pass through the focal point. Remember, I told you I am using a free hand, but I expect that candidates must use a ruler, and I am simply going to sample a few of these red diagrams. Two rays at maximum should be able to give us the image. We have another ray that passes through the optical center and this ray is extrapolated so it's continuous it's not extrapolated until when there is intersection until when there is intersection of the two light rays i want to emphasize to the students in this lesson that this must be drawn using a ruler if the object is pressed between F and 2F, you discover that the image will be formed beyond 2F. The image will be formed beyond 2F, and uh, that image must have the following properties that we call the nature, nature of image. What is important here is that students should know from my diagram, even if I'm using a free hand, the object height, can, it can be seen that the object is smaller than the image, or the image is bigger than the object. Therefore, one of them is that the image is magnified image is magnified. Magnified means bigger in size. Two, the image is upside down. This one is upright, this one is upside down, and we call that inverted. Three, I told you here I used virtual. <coughs> here I will say that the image is real. Real means that it can be formed on the screen. It also means that it is formed by actual intersection of light rays. I have not extrapolated these light rays anywhere. They have actually intersected at that point. That is what we call real images. I can say in brackets, formed by actual intersection, by actual intersection of light rays, actual intersection of light Rays. Whereas virtual, one would say that virtual means that it is formed by apparent intersection of light rays. The image is also formed beyond 2F. That is another property that it is formed beyond 2F. The second case I want to look at uh, is. The case where the object, where the object for a convex lens or a converging lens, the object is 
between F and the optical center C. The assumption again here, uh, students take note, the assumption is that the distance between F and 2F and the optical center is always supposed to be equal. So when you're drawing your actuate diagram, you must ensure that if you have a ruler, the distance between the optical center and the principal focus in the optical center and the, the center of curvature should always be the same. If we have our object here, <coughs> we still say that any ray that is parallel to the principal axis will be refracted. I need more space up, so let me redraw this and push it a little down. Um, if I put this as my central line and press my lens over there, I put this as my 2F and this as my F. The same thing, the labeling must be thorough. I have said that if I have my object over here, a ray that is incident normally to the uh, lens will be refracted to pass through the focal point. And the ray that is going to pass here through the optical center will be extrapolated. If we extrapolate this ray backwards, um, ensuring that it is a straight line, as I already cautioned you, we also extrapolate this ray uh, backwards, where these two, where these two intersect at this point is where we shall have our image. And this image is going to be dotted. In other words, it is also virtual. Why is the image virtual? Many times this question can come, and uh, I want to remind uh, the students attending this lesson that every line you see drawn here is expected to be a straight line. The reason is I expect you to use a ruler. This image, as you can see this time around, it is bigger than the object. It is dotted, a situation we have said we can describe as virtual. And uh, this is the only time we say that the convex lens can actually work as a magnifying lens. So the convex lens can be used at this position to work as the magnifying lens. The nature of the image formed must always be captured for every diagram. Here we are saying um, the image formed is virtual. It is magnified. It is upright, as you can see, and it is formed this time round on the same side as the object, on the same side as the object. Um, if you want to be specific, you can say it is formed behind the object. The object is in the front, the image is formed behind. Uh, the convex lens has six categories of image uh, object positions. These are just two. We shall proceed and look at the next position. But before we proceed, I will pause for a while and ask students to either take uh, a picture of this work 
or those who are fast at copying, allow them two minutes or so, so that they can copy um, these different uh, details. We have so far looked at that a convex lens forms only one type of image. That is a virtual image. It does not form any real image anywhere. <clears throat> the virtual image must be upright, it must be smaller, and it is always formed between uh, the focal point and the optical center of the lens. For the convex lens, we have so far seen that uh, it can form both real and virtual images. That is evident already. So should you be given a question and they say distinguish between convex lenses and concave lenses, we can clearly state that one, the principal focus of the concave lens is virtual and the principal focus of the convex lens is real. That's a very distinctive uh, difference. Two, we can say that convex lenses form only virtual images, whereas um, convex lenses form only form both virtual and real images, whereas concave lenses form only virtual images. Those two points are very distinctive. Concave lenses form only virtual images. Convex lenses can form both virtual and real images. Um, we shall proceed to look at other object positions and corresponding images. We shall proceed to look at other positions. The other position we can look at, which I'll call C, is when the object is beyond 2F. Object beyond 2F. If we consider the object beyond 2F, that is my principal axis line. I'll put this central line and attach my lens. Um, if this is F and this is 2F, this is F, this is 2F. I'm simply approximating the positions. And I have told you clearly that you must always ensure that the distance between F and 2F is always the same. I say the object is beyond 2F, so I can press it there. If it is beyond 2F, my task is to draw these two diagrams and two rays. One is from the object parallel up to the mirror. This will always be refracted to pass through the focal point. It will always be refracted to pass through the focal point. And then this will always pass through without any deviation. Without any deviation. Where the two meet is where we have our image. And the image is pressed here. To those students following and have always had challenges with drawing these images, I want to give you uh, what I will call a conclusive or determining factor for you to always make sure you get these diagrams, even if you actually don't have a graph book. If you are using your book, ruled book with ruled paper, ensure that you draw the principal axis. That is step number one. After drawing the principal axis, measure on your ruler using either a divider, a divider would be more commendable, measure a fixed distance, uh, say, uh, which represents our focal length. You can choose a focal length of about 4 centimeters. 
4 centimeters is good enough. Measure a distance of 4 centimeters, choose your optical center, and then stretch your divider to allow you choose the F. Press it here, stretch it to allow you choose the two F, and do the same this side and that side. Once you have done that, press the object where it is supposed to be, for example in this case, and use the two rays. The one that moves from the top to the lens line or the central line of the lens and know that it must be refracted to pass through the focal point. That's a principle that is standard in physics. Once you draw it refracted through F, draw another line. You must have a long ruler. The 30 centimeter ruler is more commendable. Draw a line passing through the optical center where the two intersect must definitely be between F and 2F for this particular case um, where the object is beyond 2F. And when the lines intersect normally without you having to extrapolate, we usually say that the image will have the following characteristics. From by now, someone who has consistently followed this lesson should be able to tell that whenever the image is formed normally, we call it real. That the image is real, in other words, it can be easily formed on the screen. And therefore, it is formed by the actual intersection of light rays. Number two, as you look at the image, it is upside down. So we say it is inverted. It is inverted. Number three, it is formed between F and P and 2F. It is formed between, allow me to use BTN for between, F and 2F. This is not recommended in an exam. You are expected to write full words. And uh, what is the last, the last point which may not be clearly visible here is that it is supposed to be smaller it is diminished. This image is, it should be able to come out smaller than the original object in terms of uh, object or image height, uh, which we shall shortly talk about as magnification as the lesson progresses. Um, we look at the next diagram. The object here has been beyond 2F. We are going to look at D. Uh, this is the diagram where you are expected to be very accurate. Object at 2F. You are expected to be very accurate. And uh, since I don't have a ruler, I will present um, the expected from someone using actually drawing tools. Remember, as we draw these diagrams, I keep on emphasizing that candidates or students of senior five and six that are following this lesson should note that you must always use a ruler. The object is at 2F. I press my object there. The labeling O is for the object. I have to use my two rays at the start. A ray that is incident parallel to the principal axis and that passes normally. Um, is incident normally at 90 degrees, the central line, like you see. And the ray, this ray will be refracted to pass through point F. And then we have a ray which is passing without deviation. It's passing without deviation. And under normal circumstances, I am trying my level best to make sure that uh, my ray diagrams portray exactly what is expected. This image, if you are very accurate, 
will be formed exactly at 2F. If you are very accurate, I have tried to be accurate with my free hand. It will be formed at exactly 2F and it will have the following nature. The nature of the image I will be, as you can see, one, it is formed at 2F. Formed at 2F. Two, it is expected to be exactly the same size as the object. It is the same size as object. Three, it is inverted. This can also be seen by everyone. And four, it is formed by actual intersection of light rays and therefore it is real. Actually, we can also refer to this as I can put it down here since I may not be able to fit another diagram. I can fit another diagram here. I can say that this is uh, the position where the magnification, the magnification involved here is always equal to 1. Is always equal to 1. And this can also be shown. They can ask you to show that the magnification um, of an image formed when the object is pressed at 2F is always equal to 1. We can use um, corresponding triangles to be able to show that because this is now the image distance. This is now V and this is U um, for that purpose. And then the triangles could be labeled A uh, C, D, and uh, we can use uh, different analogies uh, to refer to these triangles and be able to prove actually that magnification is one. But we are yet to define magnification and uh, candidates should be able to actually prove that. We can look at the next diagram. Uh, the next diagram which I uh, expect to fit here is object object at 2F, at F, sorry. When the object is at F, when the object is at F, we can always have our F and 2F over there. We can always have our f and 2f over there. Make sure you have your lens in position. Without the lens and the arrows, your diagrams will be narrow and void. If the object is pressed at f, what happens? Let us see. We have a ray parallel, initially parallel to the principal axis which will be refracted to pass through F. And to avoid forgetting, for every ray you draw, attach the arrow immediately. For every ray you draw, attach the arrow immediately. Then we have another ray that we have been using that passes through the principal, uh, the optical center. This ray is never deviated. Now, these two rays will never meet um, in real life. This implies that the nature of the image here is only one, that the image is formed at infinity. The image is formed at infinity. For this case, the image will be formed at infinity as these refracted rays are parallel and therefore are expected not to meet. The last diagram for the convex lens is the reverse of this diagram. That if the object is at infinity, I am uh, going, I'm not going to draw that diagram because I want you to capture all the diagrams for the convex lens on board.
They are now all illustrated except that last one which I'm just going to talk about. When this diagram is reversed, that we change these arrows, these ones, to face this side, then we are assuming the object is at infinity and the image will be formed here. So it is the same there. The diagram I would have added would be this very diagram, but if we assume that the rays are coming from an imaginary object somewhere at infinity, they would converge at the principal focus. And this is a very, very important diagram I want to emphasize, that it is usually this that is the first instruction for every experiment that requires candidates to test or to look for the focal length of a lens, even a mirror. Whenever they tell you to focus a distant object, where a distant object in physics can be as far as my teaching table here, as far, I mean as near as possible. It can be as far as a window in a, a given room, but it can also be as near as the nearest object. So, if they say focus a distance object until you get a clear image of that object on the screen, we know what we mean by the screen for the students and the past uh, students that are following this lesson. That means that if you get a clear image, the distance from your screen position, which will be actually this, is the estimate, is the estimate of the focal length for the lens in question. And whatever is told to the candidate to do thereafter will actually be using whatever is variable to give you several other results that you can actually use to reconfirm that earlier identified answer. I want to tell students that whenever they tell you to focus a distant object, focus a distant object until you get a clear image and they say read and record the distance between the image and the lens. That distance you read and record which, of course, I will tell you must be recorded to one decimal place and in centimeters. Why? Because you are using a meter rule. is usually the focal length of either the mirror or the lens you are using. And ultimately, as you wind up, if you are accurate enough, your answer should be in agreement with what you got at the start. Close agreement or approximately the same. Uh, we have come to the close of the image formations, and uh, we must move on um, uh, in our last quarter of this lesson. In our last quarter of this lesson, we are going to enter into the derivations. We are going to enter into the derivations of the lens formula. We are going to enter into the derivations of the lens formula, and. Uh, Allow me to start clearing off the space to allow us at least be able to pull out one of these different family as we wind up our lesson. Uh, we should be able to come up with a derivation of one of these uh, before today's lesson ends. For this part, which I've just finished, I want to encourage those who would wish to take a picture to please do before I can clear the space um, and prepare to move on to the last part of the lesson for today. The last part of today's lesson is going to look at the lens formula derivations. The lens formula derivations. Definitely, we shall use the two different types of lenses. Um, but as I have said, 
the time for today can only allow us can only allow us to do um, one it can only allow us to do one if we choose to begin with a convex lens if we choose to begin with a convex lens we will consider a ray AB uh, the ray AB is going to be parallel to the principal axis if we consider ray AB parallel to the principal axis refracted at B and uh, after refraction it will pass through the focal point through the principal focus the principal focus is F then we can have that statement put into a picture that if I have a ray starting from A meeting the lens at point B this ray will be refracted to pass through a point F, the principal focus. But if this is extrapolated, then this is called the angle of deviation, which I can call D. And since this is F, if we let this be at a height H away, then we can be able to generate an expression here. Remember the rays must be, have, must be arrowed. And if we use trigonometry from here, we can say that the, tan the tangent of the angle of deviation D should be equal to the opposite over the adjacent in the opposite is H, and the adjacent is F. But for small angles, for small angles, in radians, in radians, the turn of D is approximately D. This implies that our H out of F can be equated to D and we call this equation A. This is our diagram one. Diagram two, we can have a big lens. I'll just use a cross section of this as my lens and have a small extrapolation to illustrate our angle. And then we shall have the object, the point object coming through from a point O and then refracted. This point object is refracted here to give an image here. That means that under normal circumstances, if we say the refracted rays from there, the center point, then this is going to be H. We shall extrapolate this to create this angle as D. We can call this angle alpha and call this beta. Uh, this is the object distance U here, and this is the image distance. V up to the image. Um, after coming up with this quickly, we can say that from interior angles, from angle geometry, our alpha plus our beta should be equal to D. I'll call this B. But the turn of alpha from here will be h over u and the turn of beta 
will be h over v. For small angles still, for small angles in radians, we can say the turn of alpha is approximately alpha, which implies that alpha is h out of u, and turn of beta is approximately beta, which also implies that is h out of v. If we substitute here, we shall have in B that alpha, which is h out of u plus beta, which is h out of v, is equal to D. But from A, D is h out of F. So we can substitute and say h out of u plus h out of v is actually h out of f. If we eliminate h, we eventually get what I'll call the famous, the famous lens formula that 1 out of u plus 1 out of v is equal to 1 out of f. The lens formula is therefore henceforth derived uh, in simple terms. It is derived there and uh, this is the way we do it. As we wind up, I want to emphasize that students should learn um, to draw correct diagrams. The ray AB that I talked about is here, refracted pass through F, and this is the focal length. This is the angle of deviation D. This is the height H. If we assume that these angles are very small and in radians, we approximate that the turn of a small angle is actually equal to that angle. Even if you checked on your calculator, turn of a very small angle, as long as you've converted it to radians, there is a mode that moves it from degrees to radians to gradient. If you use it in radians and you put a very small angle like turn of 2, it should approximately give you 2, or turn of 0, 0.00 something should approximately give you that value. For the second diagram, we are saying that if we consider a point object, it will give us a point image there, the object distance is u, the image distance is v, the height above is h. So we have triangles that are right angled. We take the turn and the turn of beta and alpha. They are radian angles. We approximate them to h over v for beta and h over u for alpha. When we feed them here, we get that equation. When we substitute for d, we simplify and get our lens formula. I will be stopping here. I'm not going to go beyond here because of time. Um, I want to leave uh, a challenge for my students as an assignment to start thinking about deriving the lens formula uh, for, for a concave, for a concave lens. For a concave lens, uh, we need to derive the lens formula for a concave lens. Definitely that is where we are going to start next time uh, with our lesson. But try out and verify where you will have gone right or wrong then. I want to wish you a good weekend. Ask you to continue. Continue reading. Continue following up my work on YouTube. And I can assure you that you always get what you put in. There is no gain without pain. And surely if you do your best... God will do the rest for you. God bless you. Have a nice weekend. Somera mul boso misizo mwana wa masomero ka Janan Schools omuri campus ye bombo kalule ne ye kabalagala to bana bwera likirivu bonna olwo msinjo kutambuzibwe byenjigiriza ne nsoma yabayize yo murembe mu masomero ka fega nogo na tusomisa arts and sciences okuvira dala ku sinyi soka okutuka ku sinyi yo mukaga nga tusomisa abana okuvira dala ku mutendero gwa kindagate okutuka ku kibine echo musambo tulina abasomisa bakugu mukubangula abana nokuba teka teka ebi bina abana mu basomero ebyo murembe omuri buli chimwe chikwata ko ebyo bibasoma ebisule byazimbiwa obulunje ebigazi atenga byo Okumanyi bisinga wo tukubire ku namba zisimwe zo wamanga
For the first time in Uganda, Africel introduces the first ever 4G Vida K242 feature plus phone at only 120,000 shillings. Watch video 